G'day in tonight's video I'm going to let all the footage from my Sydney trip shine through for the C400. You'll see lots of examples of me using the digital telephoto option. So with the 24-105 f2.8 lens and this digital telephoto option you actually get a really good zoom option and I personally find that the footage looks really good even when zoomed in digitally at the uh, three times teleconverter so really useful option for those hectic run and gun moments where you just want to zoom in and get something that's uh, not very close to you there's heaps of variety in the footage so hopefully you get a good idea of what this camera can do so enjoy and i'm going to put an excerpt from my podcast it's not about that with two fabulous shooters called ben and sam hope you enjoy let's uh welcome our today's guests ben and sam no i've been corrected sam and ben it is Sam and Ben. Oh, yeah. Sam and Ben. Yeah. That feels uncomfortable. I'm going to have to work on that. But today we are going deeper with my two dear friends who I met maybe in 2018. Yeah. I could tell a story about how we first met. <laughs> Go for it. Rocky okay. Beginnings. Yeah, yeah. Rocky Beginnings. So we were filming an event and I just met Aaron and I was like, oh, look at this other guy. He's, a, he's another thing. Like we just started off in the industry. I was like, let's make connections with people in the industry, yada, yada, yada. And so we're filming this event and I go to Aaron. I'm like, oh, what did I say? I said, uh, riveting stuff, isn't it? And Aaron turns to me and he goes, Shh, like fully gets up me, fully gets up me about ha trying to have a chat with him. Like a teacher scolding his Like a teacher. And I was like, I even went over to Ben I was like, this guy <laughs> just just a shoes to me. Uh, okay. Is this a um, ch children friendly podcast? I have no idea. Oh. It's going to bleep things. Or? Yeah. yeah, you're going to have. There are buttons. I can do this. Ready? Like. <laughs> <laughs> I don't play the use those. Yes. Anyways, no, yeah, no. I'm ashamed of my behaviour and <laughs> I have learned. I've never shushed anyone ever since. And I, to be honest, I don't remember doing that. But we <laughs> deny, 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 deny. <laughs> yeah. deny the allegations. It's, uh, I, I'll put out a press release saying I was yeah. never there. Okay. I didn't do those photos. So, yes, no, but what excited me about meeting you back then was the fact that I also was like, oh, here's two other guys. Like there's this weird instant like, you want to be friends with them, but you're almost like it's almost competition, which is the mm. dumbest thing to have in your brain because yeah. it's like we're both there. Yeah. It's like we are clearly both have the job. So it's yeah. like why fight these inner – like why does your brain instantly go to like, yeah, oh, it's an enemy. Like mm. it's so bizarre. At least we're in like you mostly do photos when we're doing videos. So it's sort of like we're in the same boat, not too competitive. Yeah, But, but even, you, even if we were doing videos, like – God, why, why would we fight mm. the other people there? Like, it yeah. doesn't make sense. There's enough bread for everyone to eat. Yeah. That's what Roy Colbert taught to me back in the day. Yeah. That's your mentor. That's yeah. the Roy yeah. boy. He's a, he's a good man. He's a good man. I sound so deep. In <laughs> <laughs> We're going deeper. <laughs> yeah, I put the base up. <laughs> yes. Well, no. So I want to find out from you guys, how did you two meet? Oh, uh, do you really want to know? Yes. Well, geez, it's a bit of a long story. I don't want to go too far into it. Otherwise, we'll go back forever. But basically, I was in uni, met a girl on Tinder. And um, it was in like my last semester of uni. And I was planning on going back to Perth because I'm from Perth. And I was studying on the Gold Coast. And then I um, didn't have anywhere to live because I met this girl. And I was like, I'm going to have to stay here in Queensland. Can't go back home. And so... Her, she was like, you should meet my friend Sam because he does film. You might get along with him. And then um, met Sam and I needed a place to stay and Sam had a house that was completely empty. And so he very generously, without even knowing me, said I could live there rent-free. Jesus. Yeah, no, it was, a, it, was a, it was a bold move, but luckily it, it was it a worked bold move. Out. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I just had no – I was just – I had an entire place to myself and I would just live <laughs> – between the kitchen and my bedroom. So imagine imagine you have a whole house. You're like, I started living there when I was 17 and a half. And I just, yeah, I just had the whole house to myself. But I I did, I did, had no need for a lounge room or anything like that. So my bedroom just became my... Everything. My everything. My living room, my freaking 
Not my toilet, but. <laughs> <laughs> Only on weekends. Anyway, so it was nice to have someone in there to open up the yeah. house. So it was more selfish than anything else yeah, that was. you brought me into the yeah, house. Yeah. Yeah. I actually, or I'd, at the time, I'd seen Ben's grad film as well, okay. which was like far better than anything I'd ever made in my entire life. And I was like, I reckon if I get into bed with this guy. <laughs> Emery did. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon if I get into bed with this guy, then it's going to be good things for my future career. So That's I actually selfish. <laughs> had motives. Yeah, yeah. Hitching the wagon. I like it. Yeah, no. Completely selfish. Yeah. And then we, and, and then, then became, every, the rest of the Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, had you ever like just randomly invited someone to live with you without knowing them it was actually a bit of a running theme of the house like uh, so i invited my other mate kurt to live with me there for a while because i was like i just want friends like, <laughs> <laughs> need a friend <laughs> i was living by myself for so long so kurt lived there for a while I had another mate jc he lived there for a while but you were the first like permanent oh and before you was jared Oh, that's right. This other guy, he's yeah. a lovely chap. But then, yeah, no, it was yeah, it was kind of like a halfway house for people between school and the final stage of moving out, where they actually like pay rent and stuff like that. It was like a little, I don't know, really doing a service for everyone. I was, <laughs> I just wanted friends. <laughs> <laughs> I need people. But so, like, what's the like? How did you guys connect so? Well, and because like I've obviously only known you as the two of you, right? <laughs> so, and we each independently have a friendship now, but like it's, I think it was just a shared, a shared passion to try and do something really at the end of it. There's a few, a few <clears throat> drunken nights where we're like, <laughs> so childish, but we're, like, we're gonna make it, man. We're gonna do it. We're gonna fucking, <laughs> we're gonna make something of ourselves. And then now we're here. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's Clearly that have, didn't work. No, you have made it. You have made it. You're in my kitchen. <laughs> We're on a podcast. That's huge. Yeah. I didn't know you had a grad film. Um, how yeah. can I watch this? Um, it's password protected on Vimeo. It's really good. It's called Nutcase. Yeah. It's like, it's a comedy film. Um, and yeah, it was amazing. It almost got picked up by ABC, but then Ben had a go. At- no, no, no. I didn't have a go. Basically... ABC, we were like pitching it to like make it a bigger show. And I had a contact at ABC. He was the head of comedy. And I had a meeting with him and I went in there and met with him. And he was like asking me questions about old ABT, ABC TV shows, which I hadn't seen. And then he took that as I didn't care about oh, TV. Okay. And so then the next week he was in Perth doing a, a conf- like a, what do you call them? A seminar in front of like hundreds of people. And he called me out because my friend was there at the, at the thing. And he was like, it's really important that if you want to be in this industry, you have to know the the TV shows that you're going on to. And he made a point of me being uneducated. Yeah. Anyway, he doesn't work there anymore. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, really? He, he was a lawyer turned comedy head at ABC. Well, that's a joke you in know, itself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The people who know comedy are lawyers. Yeah. But I'm glad that it didn't work out because I don't think it was really the avenue I wanted to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh. Like we've got more going on here, more potential. Will you let me watch it one day? Yeah, yeah, you can see it. I would do it completely different if I could do it again. What? It was all locked up. Like they had big, big cameras at uni and there was no real – yet you had to get a, a, a license to use the Steadicam and like no one took the time to do that. So everyone just had to film everything on sticks pretty much. Yeah. And so it was a very like flat, locked off thing. Kind of way for the vibe though, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway. I'm very, very excited by this. Very it's, Wes Anderson. It is very Wes Anderson. <laughs> The um, so speaking of uh, like uni and mm. film school, mm-hmm. what don't they teach you that should be front and center? Um, what Sam taught me really, like the practical, like realistically, most of the people that went to film school didn't continue doing film <laughs> because they only teach you like Hollywood standard filmmaking, and there's not that many, there's not that many movies or shows to go around to give everyone a job there, and so you're left with all these skills that you can't work with. But when I went and met with Sam, he was like, here's a whole way to take those skills and put it into like a a corporate or advertising world. And so then I was actually able to use all those skills every day. Yeah. Otherwise everyone just like couldn't get, couldn't get work. And then they were like, I don't know how to make this like realistically corporate films and stuff like that or corporate movies is a good way to like keep active and like keep working. And then now because of that, we're going back into it. But they don't teach you how to like workflows and 
clients yeah. and all that sort of stuff. It's almost kind of like if you put that into a music perspective, it's like a band that does covers to pay the bills Monday to Friday working on the originals mm-hmm. rather than just going at 18 or 16 or whatever going, I'm going to make it big. Yeah. Yeah. And then you don't and you crash and burn. So it's like Correct. kind of it does feel funny and I've heard that story a thousand times from people where they don't, film school doesn't actually seem to give you that grounding, that base yeah. that people really need and they get burnt out and then yeah. just like. It's, it's like, not realistic. Yeah, it's like to put it back in the music perspective, it's like trying to go out <clears throat> and have your first thing be like get an album deal or something from a record label yeah. as opposed to, yeah, busking or something like that. Well, yeah. they teach you. One of the teachers was like, you're not going to work for most of the year, so you might as well learn how to paint houses. He was like, I, in my spare time, I paint houses so that I can like keep paying the bills. But why wouldn't you just teach in your spare time, learn how to do like corporate videography or like your own business, keep going with those skills and then keep pitching for the, the Hollywood stuff. 100%. Yeah. Like, it's just keeping active. Now, what, how did you get your, like, how did you know what Ben needed to know? Roy Kohlberg. Yeah. Roy Kohlberg. He went to my school and then I met his mum at like a career day and she was like, oh, my son works in the industry. Absolutely lovely lady. And I was like, at that time I was like, how do I, how do I, I'll do anything. I'll fucking scrub toilets. if I <laughs> <laughs> Then he tells like, can I come in? Can I meet him? Like just to try and talk to people and figure out how they did it. And then she was like, yeah. And then I met him and we went for a coffee and I was just like a, wide-eyed young kid and I was like tell me everything and then I was like can I come watch you edit for a while and then I watched him edit but then I guess when you watch someone edit you get to see all the rushes of the filmers because he was just an editor and then I had like a old camera that my brother gave me and I went to my brother's graduation there was like a Mercedes tent there and I like filmed the cars and made a little edit out of it and then sent it to Mercedes Benz and then they posted it on their Instagram. No, on their Facebook at the time. And then someone saw that video and reached out to me to make a real estate video and then I made their real estate video and then somebody else. But you else- like implemented the techniques that Roy taught you to, to know how to do the rest Correct, of yeah, 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 to know what shots to get and how to do the interviews and whatnot and yeah, no, yeah. the rest is history. It was a good time. See, isn't that so cool? It's like... The kind of almost like, what would you call it, ghetto style learning. <laughs> and then you've got like a formal uni setting, but then you like put it together. Yeah. Very much. I was in film school at the time, but uh, after I worked with Roy Colbo for a while, I dropped out of film school because I was like, it's, I didn't, I never wanted to do the Hollywood style, ironically, with where we are now. I never wanted to do the Hollywood style filmmaking of like sets and like actors and stories and stuff like that. Like, I just wanted to make music videos. And so when I saw that that's what they were teaching at film school and not much else, I was kind of like, oh, also assignments. Who goes to film school to, like, <laughs> at, like analyse? That's the whole reason I went to film school is because I was bad at, <laughs> like, writing and, like, I still can't spell. And then the fact that I go to film school and they're like, Watch, what's that movie that they always make you watch about the... Ke- Run Lord. No, 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 about the, the, pro- the old Prime Minister or something. So, so oh, like, Citizen Kane. Citizen Kane. Yeah. yeah. It's black and white. Old. <laughs> watch Citizen Kane and write a report on it. I was like, fuck this. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Words, like text. It's just like, <laughs> yeah. oh, please. And it's the complete not- opposite of film, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. No, anyway, so that's, that's it. And then yeah. the rest is history. And then we made a YouTube <laughs> video for a while. Of YouTube videos YouTube. for a while, yeah. which is... Yeah, I feel like that really solidified our characters as human beings. Yeah, you kind of find out who you are, just like you're doing right now. Yeah. So, yes, well, I'm finding very much out about you. Now, I'm going to jump ahead because I had, I did have the YouTube question further down. Okay. But, yeah, so what made you start doing YouTube stuff and then what made you stop? Because you kind of had, like you are telling me the other day, you had like one video had like 40,000 views and... I've only ever watched the one you showed me the other day, which was hilarious, by the way. But which one was that one? Um, the giving the money away. Uh, I yeah. actually, I love. I thought that it was, was hilarious, awesome. but yeah. it's. Um, well, I think we started doing the YouTube because we lived in a corporate space where everything's so like, I don't know, not the most creative thing. And we, I think, as people, we probably have more to give to the world than just making corporate videos. And so we get my too far away. Gotta get, get yeah. in. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just a creative outlet. But we also saw we also saw other people that were just like us doing it, and we were like, oh, well, if they can do it, we can probably do it here in Australia. You know, so yeah. And then the reason that we stopped is because we had one big video, the Billie Eilish video, which was like Billie Eilish released a music video. It was in COVID in lockdown, 
And I, I guess while we were trying to do it, we were like, if we just get one big video, that'll be it. Like if we get, that'll get the ball rolling. Like that'll be, we'd be good to go. We'd be good to go. And then so we, Billy Eilish released this music video where she was like dancing around in a, in a um, completely empty shopping center because it was COVID and it was all closed down. But here in Australia, everything was still open because it hadn't hit so hard. So we we're like, oh, what if we dance around like Billie Eilish, like making a fool of ourselves, but the shopping mall's open. So obviously you would get the reactions, reactions of, of all the people and stuff like that. Yeah. And so we were like, oh, we're going to jump on it right away. Like we got to do it. And like we planned and shot that video in like a one day time span because we knew because her video was like number one on trending or whatever. And we were like, if we can just get our video as the video that people watch after that. And it was called like... The name, the exact name of her video had like almost the same thumbnail and everything, but it said, but the mall is open in the end. And it worked exactly like we thought it would. But then after that, we released like a few more videos and then we just went back to our normal viewership and we realized that there was a, there was a core problem with the videos that we were making. Like there, there was nothing different about them as opposed to what everybody else was making. Yeah. It's not dead though. It will come back eventually in, in a big way, in a big way. It's simmering. It's it is. Monday, the 20th of November, 2023. In a few years' time, this will be, be a timepiece. <laughs> this right will be a timepiece. I yeah. love it. Yeah. And uh, you've signed the release form, right? Like yeah. <laughs> we do not do release form. <laughs> we, do. we take control. <laughs> so the other interesting thing I really want to find out with you guys is working so closely with someone uh-huh. from a yeah, relatively young age. Like you guys didn't really go to business school. You didn't really – like you guys are almost instant business partners mm working together without like a structure, without like a, a corporate document saying, hey, you can't call this guy a head and, <laughs> you know, you've got recourse to be like, F- you. Like yeah. how do you manage the relationship both being so close personally mm. and running a business together? Yeah. yeah. We actually do have a document, an official document about the company and I am the chairman of the company. <laughs> Just so that we know. Do I need to call you chairman? Yeah. <laughs> okay. They had they had to um you had to nominate yeah. a chairman of the company and a secretary and a secretary <laughs> and the chairman. So it just went by height, did it? Yeah. <laughs> Still six foot. <laughs> shoes. Um. Yeah. No. I think communication. <laughs> I had. You're to looking teach. at him like, what can I say? <laughs> I had to teach Ben the art of communication. You know who taught me communication was my mom. Yeah. I think it's it's improbable to go through life and I think this was one of the, the guiding philosophies in our early days was it's improbable to think that you're going to go through life and not have a disagreement with someone about one thing or another. So it's about learning how to have a disagreement mm. and we're not the best at it all the time, but I reckon I we're, we're pretty, pretty good yeah, at it. We're pretty good at it. Like anytime, like you can, f- you can feel a Barney <laughs> bubbling in like, in like a, a Barney's a fight. So you can feel a Barney bubbling in like the, <laughs> the 15 minutes before it actually hits. And so when you're having a conversation, like when we both feel a Barney <laughs> bubbling, the language will get very like... Diplomatic. Very, <laughs> it'll, it'll turn from like a normal conversation to like, the thing that I feel <laughs> is that when you do this, it's not... A, and then like sometimes using that language, you can reel it back. <laughs> From yeah. like an actual Barney, and then but then sometimes it just it just goes, and then you know you know it's a you know it's a Barney when the door gets closed in the office, and it's like okay, we're gonna do this, like let's go. But you have to get it all out on the table, otherwise it will just simmer and be bad. So I think getting it all done and using the techniques of of communicating. Yeah, yeah. I think that's yeah that's the other key thing is you we never leave. You, it's stupid to – we're both working towards the same goal. Like we both want the same thing and that's, I don't know, whatever whatever we're arguing about to just be fixed. So if you like – if you leave a Barney and you still have this like thing in the back of your head that was like, I wish I'd said that or like, oh, I've still got this other grudge about this other thing that I'm holding on to from like three weeks ago but I'm not yeah. going to bring it up now, then it's like that's just going to fester and be bad. So it's like whenever we have a Barney, it's after – after that Barney, it's a completely fresh sled. Fr- <laughs> fresh sled. It's like, okay, mo- like all our problems are solved now. We're back being best friends. So there's no point. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. <laughs> there's no point holding on to anything. And like, you have a cigarette and you lay down and you talk yeah. about it afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> 
And you always got to hug it out at the end. Yes. No matter hug. how you feel, you got to hug it out. Yeah, yeah. And you don't want a hug, but the hug is like There's the closure. Only been one time we've left without a hug. Yeah. And that time we left without a hug, we were both driving home and I called Ben and I was like, let's not. Let's not, do, let's not do this. <laughs> and then so we met up at a park on our way home and we just talked it out for another 15, 20 minutes. Uh, and then that was, yeah. See, I like it because it's like it is okay to disagree with someone. Yeah. Completely. Like it's going to happen. We would all just be numb robots if we're like, yes, yes, yes. Like, yeah. Yeah. But acknowledging it and not like not saying sorry but like yeah working through it together and just being yeah. like yeah of course yes like, yeah. yeah it's like people people really struggle with that and mm. you know relationships and I life think, i think i think sam should move into like the speaking circuit and show people how to communicate <laughs> sam is a master communicator that is the only reason why we've got where we are i'm good at making videos Sam's good at keep, like, and you're good at making videos no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> that's what i was actually gonna say as well sorry you finished oh yeah no i think We've divided our skill sets into I just focus on the work, mostly. Sam obviously does a lot of work, but <laughs> I make sure that we keep maintaining the standard and Sam can devote his energy into making sure that he can, like, make people like us, really. Yeah. Totally. And, yeah, that's the other thing I was going to say. That's the other part of the business is not just Barney's, but <laughs> the clear roles. Well, not clear roles, but, like, understanding that one person's going to have strengths where are this is a classic thing. One person's <laughs> going to have strengths where the other person has weaknesses and being okay with that. And I still struggle with that sometimes, but we work through it. Yeah. You know how, like, you're like, oh, it's so, like, boring to say that, but it's yeah. like there's basics in life. Yes. You know? yeah. and it's, okay. it's okay. I think for a long time we tried to do the same thing and then that was not productive. And that so, just led to more fights. Yeah. And so once we, like, put lane, lanes for ourselves, then we did a lot better in those lanes. Yeah. Pe- people management's a huge part of our industry, industry and role and filming yeah. and all that jazz. Like, especially in a, in a corporate commercial space, it's like it is a massive part of just like, one, we can't read people's minds. Two, we're not going to get it right necessarily every time mm. that they say, hey, can you come make this? And it's like first draft mightn't exactly be what they were thinking. And it's like just working and talking with them and mm-hmm. and like fostering those relationships. So it's like not like, oh, those two weirdos came and filmed this thing. We are never getting them back again. Like it's it's a huge part of it. It yeah. also helps that Ben's really attractive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you notice why we put him in the center. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like if all else fails, at least we got a good looking bloke. Yeah. I want to know. I don't know. Whether I was going to flip the script as well. I don't know whether this is an interview thing, but you. So loud. Uh, you are a weapon, an absolute weapon at people. Oh, we look at you in awe and we're like, yes, just the one-liners and the Like, you are... You can a command wa- a crowd. You you are everything that we are not. You have... It's years of experience. You know what you are? You are... Like, we are both running at 50% capacity and you are the 100%. Like, we're half yes. of you. <laughs> yes. It takes two of us to <laughs> get one of you. One of you, yeah. It's just... Just treading water. That's all I'm doing. <laughs> no, I don't know. I where did you get it from? I think I just I learnt it on the job. Um, but to be to be honest, my grandfather is a was a people man. Oh, like I thought you were going to say pimp. <laughs> yeah, he's a pimp. No, he um and his brother. So like I don't know, uncle, granddad, or whatever you call it. He was like he was on all the time, like to the point where my grandma couldn't stand him because he could she's like, he just wouldn't say anything normal. Yeah. All he was doing was joking. Yeah. So I try and go halfway between the two. Most, I, I do go to the, the wrong extreme most mm. of the time. But I think those two, and I liked that. I mm. was like, this is fun. It keeps the energy up. It keeps, I don't know, smiling is yeah. like a an, uh, contagious kind of thing. Yeah. So like if you're putting out, I know it sounds dumb, but like, I like to put out what I want to get. Yeah. yeah. And it's like if I can lift a room and make a normal situation not so My normal, name. then it's like, like, I don't know. Yeah. But, like, I, I'm, I'm genuinely a shy person deep down. Really? Yeah, yeah, shy, for I sure. I don't believe it. Not yeah. for a second. <laughs> You're <laughs> lying. And it's just – but, like, if I walk into a room without a camera, I'm like, mm, yes. it's a bit harder. And I've had to actually work on that. Like, I've had to go, like – and it's like – my brain, if I go to a party or like a gathering or whatever you call them these days, because I never leave the house, but the, <laughs> yeah. I'll walk in, my brain says, just hide in the corner and don't talk to anyone. Then I flip it and go, go say hello to everyone straight away and you've broken every single ice there is yes. to break and then you know everyone. 
Yeah. Because there's that weird feeling I find like, you know, if you're the first two people in a room and you can be in that room by like 15 seconds earlier than the other one, but the, the third person walks in, they'll feel like they're already behind. Yes, mm. that's interesting. So if you're that, that third person, that's often me, I'll come in and just say hello to the first two quickly and then like the ice is done. Yeah. And I'm in. I feel like not feel like I'm in, but like no, it's just cemented in that in that gathering. Yeah, it's yeah. just kind of that's how I've worked it, and mm. I've done that in a workspace. And I definitely try and um, I don't know. There's people I'm shy of, but if I'm like if my body's saying, oh, I don't know, they're they're a CEO or they're famous or something. Don't don't go say hello to them. Be afraid of them. I'll go to them straight away and just break the ice. And it's yeah. like, they just look at you and go, well, who are you? Yeah. Oh, he's a human. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's all done. I don't know. It's That's weird. a great technique. The other thing I've definitely worked out that I'm comfortable with rejection mm. in a conversation, I can come up and someone can just not get me. They're yeah. just like, they look at me just like, why is he still talking to me? Yeah. I've clearly given this guy an indication. Yeah. I have no interest in this conversation. Yeah. And I'm cool with that. Yeah. I'm not going to be everyone's. Cup of, cup, of tea. Tea. cup of tea. You're my cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> Earl Grey. <laughs> so, yeah, I think it's just, it's important. Like rejection is okay. Yes. Yeah. I think, and I guess at events, because as a photographer for so many years, I've gone up to people, can I take your photo? Nope. Oh, yeah, sure. You're like, okay. <laughs> Early on, I'd be like, it'd bum my night out. He'd yeah, be like, yeah. oh, I don't want to do this. No. And then you're like, it's okay. Not everyone wants a photo. Like yeah. they yeah. didn't come to this event for a photo. So yeah. it's cool. Sure. I'm still coming to terms with that. Mm. Yeah. It's hard. It, yeah. It's a, it's a strange feeling. You guys are mid twenties. Yeah. Mid Ben's, late 20s. Ben's late twenties. Jesus. What's your mindset? Uh, um, my mindset, and it's maybe a controversial one that when I speak to people my age is twenties, you've got so much like energy to, and stamina that you should really try and establish yourself now and then you can enjoy things more when you're like 30 and 40. Whereas I think a lot of people, not a lot of people, but the classic mindset is travel when you're young, don't worry about your problems, like delay it until you're older. And you are going to have a lot of fun in your 20s, but I think I'll have a lot more fun in my 30s when I'm comfortable. Okay. I think it's fun to like dip dip into a bit of fun when you're 20s but then it's nice to if you're like going out up we have the same mindset obviously that's why we're in business together but i think if you go out and have like you just i don't know it's nice to go out have a good night have a bit of fun and then come home and when you're battling the scaries on like sunday it's like oh, it's all good i've got i've got my shit sorted out yeah. you know what i mean i'm working towards something Do you makes it so much more fun when you go out and have fun knowing that you're also simultaneously working towards a future. Yes. What got you into that space? Like that seems to be like a really clever, smart position to be in, like just as your frontal lobes kind of <laughs> developed, a lot of people fuck it up. Like what know. made you want to do that? Um, Did you have a mentor? Someone guide you? You saw someone else? You are inspired? I don't know. I think I just had a few friends that were pretty, pretty well off and like comfortable in their life because of their parents and I saw that they had a pretty good life and I was like, I want to be able to enjoy my life like that as soon as possible. Okay. I have a very big, deep answer that I arrived to a long time ago. But, and this was like, this was like 18 year old Sam, like laying in bed at home at night. I don't believe, it's deep, but I don't believe in an afterlife. So I reckon that you've got one opportunity here on this earth to live and to experience what it is to be a human. And I think that to, so you have that one chance and you want to make the most of it. And how do you make the most of it? Unfortunately, as much as it sucks is you need money to make the most of it. Cause you don't want to, if you want to wake up one day and be like, I want to get in a jet and go X or go Y, then you need money to do that. So it's like, okay, well, here's the two things. You got one life and to do things, you want to do you need to make money so what's the bridge between that it's just to make as much money as possible pick the wrong <laughs> industry to <do> that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. why I didn't, didn't we do real that. estate yeah. like my god I'm i didn't figure that out until later but now yeah. we're here <laughs> yeah but you also have to do something that you enjoy otherwise it's never gonna work out yeah. you know what i mean well i was discussing with someone the other day um about when i was i remember distinctly being in like grade six and seven and we had like a little 
they actually had like a little board devising up and we had like a competition at an old people's home, like a press the buzzer and answer the question, like a oh, sale oh, of the century, yeah. but like, yeah. 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 Well, I can't remember what it's called, but what was that called? Where you press, what is it again? It's like, like they ask a question, yeah, a game show and then whoever presses yeah. the first oh, gets to answer. I know yeah. But anyway, so I was really good at general knowledge. Like I don't know whether it was just like my parents watching the news or whatever or, or something, but I just remember going, okay, like all my life I've been really good at general stuff. I've never been really able to like hone in and or never had an interest in like really honing in on mm. one thing. And I realised that this career and this job is very generalist because I'm going to different clients yeah. and different mm. industries all the time and just getting bits and pieces. So like I'll be talking about you know, something happening in the parking industry because of a job and then yeah. I'll come along and talk about the mental health space because yeah. I've heard something yeah. at a job or like – and I love it because it's just so general and you're just picking up lots of pieces rather than only being like so mm. blinkered into one industry. Yes. And I just – I only made this connection the other day that like I think I was – I think my body just pushed me in this yeah, part. Do you think that's a lot of general knowledge or do you think that's lots of individual instances of specific knowledge? That's interesting. Is that just general knowledge? Or is that what general knowledge is? Yeah. Know. That's a hard one. It's a yeah, deep depends one. how <laughs> yeah. we're going deeper. Yeah. Depends how far you're into it, you go, I guess. I think I can hear lots of like technical stuff at these jobs and sometimes that's like, mm. so I like, I won't remember numbers and stuff, but I'll, yeah. I'll know that like, you know, so you're just getting really general knowledge. I think really general. Well, it's, yeah, my inability to retain that. <laughs> it's probably the problem. Um, <laughs> you know what's hard about that as well, just on that, is when you're making a video for someone about something really complicated, you need to understand that topic to make that video as best as can be. We made a little while ago, we made a video on biomedical manufacturing and it was like we had to understand... Firstly, we had to understand what biomedical manufacturing was. And then we had to understand the problem that was occurring in the biomedical manufacturing space and then how the project that we were marketing was going to solve that problem and then try and outline all of those things in a clear, concise, concise, way. concise way. Yeah. But then you just move on to something completely yeah. like the next week. Yeah. And then, yeah, then you're just like, <laughs> it's, I like that. I, I love, like, you send a draft to a client on one industry yeah. and then you literally continue on with the other like the second draft or the yeah. one that the feedbacks come back on and can be like totally totally different direction and then like you send that one off and then they've come back with their feedback and you're back in this zone it's yeah. Like, yeah yeah it's forever just moving Chopping around but, yeah. but it took a long time to realize that like we when we first started making videos we just went off what we thought was cool like a gut instinct of it and we ended up making an architecture video for this architecture company and i <laughs> we thought it was a really great video and then we sent it to my friend and he was like all we did in the video was just film people point like this is what we do. Just people pointing at things and like going. And he was like, it's a lot of people for an architecture video. Like we just completely didn't even think yeah, yeah. to film the houses. We just filmed people in the houses. Yeah. So it, you, you it was more about the client's experience. 